pray that we will receive it. So let us all stand. I'm accustomed to standing. So every child in the place, mother and father, please turn and look at the child and say, we got to stand and reverence the house of God as well as the word of God. So we have our word of God. And that is coming from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to 20. That's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to 20. We do have night service. So we ask all of our guests, notice I'm not asking the saints, but asking the guests if they will come back tonight. We have a wonderful preacher that's going to be preaching the word of God. Excited to hear the preachers and the young preachers and those who are coming up to preach the word of God. So I'm excited to hear what God is going to say. And so we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to 20. It is also on the monitors. And the reason why we do that, I don't know why other churches, but the reason why we have monitors, is I want you to be able to say, I read it for myself. I don't want you to say, well, that preacher said this, or that man was saying this. Do you believe that or no? Don't believe me, but believe what is written. If you can read it for yourself, then you read it, and you are held accountable for that. So the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to 20, the Bible says, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments and thou mayest live and multiply and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it but if thine heart turn away if you turn away from this so that thou wilt not hear and shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them or other things and go after them. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land where thou passest over Jordan to go to the possessing. I call heaven, notice what he's doing, I call heaven and earth to record a record this day against you that I have set before you life and death Blessings and curses. Therefore choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. And that thou mayest, mayest obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life. And the length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the land. Which the Lord swore unto thy fathers. To Abraham. To Isaac. And to Jacob. To give them. My title, this message this morning is Consequences. 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 Let's ask God to help us with this message. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We've read the word of God. Now speak to us. Tell us what it is that you want us to hear. Let us not, God, be upset with the word of God. But God, let us receive it with an open heart. Let our minds, oh God, be open to the word of God and what it's saying. Father, we're not a people. And I'm not a preacher, Lord God, that believes that the Old Testament is done away with. I'm not a preacher, Lord God, that believes that we can pick and choose out of the New Testament of what it is that we want to believe. But God, all of the scripture. From the old covenant to the new covenant, oh God. Father God, it is for everyone. Father, we thank you for what you have done in our lives. And I thank you for allowing us to be here. So right now, God, we ask that your will be done this morning. Touch our hearts, oh God. I pray that, Lord God, when we leave here, we're not the same way. Let not sleep and slumber overtake us right now. For the enemy wants to rock us to sleep. Wants to distract us. Wants to send us a text. Wants the Lord God, us to search Facebook, Lord God. Maybe to post this and to post that. But right now, Lord God, I'm in your presence, Lord God. Speak to me, oh God, that it does not God. Allow me to go back to the way that I was. I want to change. I want to repent, God. I want to do what is right. I want to be saved, oh God. I don't want to hold on to my sin, God. And get upset, oh God, about what is preached. 
But God, if you're talking to me, then it's you telling me I got to change, that I got to fix it, that I got to be made right. You're telling me to choose, oh God. And God, when I choose, there's a consequence to everything, God, that I choose, whether good or bad. But I want to choose life. I want to choose you. Which means I choose what your word says. I give you the glory and the honor. And I bind every wickedness and every witch and every devil and every unclean spirit, oh God, that wants to, Lord God, take the seed that is being planted today. Father, you said some will plant the seed and some will water. But Lord, I'm asking you, give increase today. Save Bell Blade and save for Hokey, South Bay, Clueless, and Canal Point, all the way down to Miami, God. Let them hear the word. It will not turn to void, God, but it will accomplish that which you are sent to do. I give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say, Amen. Clap your hands, everybody, in this place. Somebody just rejoice and give God glory and honor. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Consequences. I remember Pastor Collins giving this report. It happened uh, up in Tampa. And it happened in the area called Plant City. And there was a tragedy event that took place uh, in August of 2016. Uh, the police report says in Plant City, listen to this report. A man by the name of Mr. Durham, Mr. Padgett, got into a road rage confrontation. And this is Mr. Durham here. Mr. Padgett pulled out his weapon and shot Mr. Durham and killed him. Hold that picture there, sir. But the crazy part, this all happened at a road rage on the road at the Plant City. Mr. Durham was shot by a man by the name Mr. Padgett. Mr. Padgett, they had a road rage that got into a confrontation, a little fight. Mr. Padgett pulled out his gun and began to shoot uh, Mr. Durham. And Mr. Dorm falls out and he's dead. Uh, paramedics gets there, he's gone. But the crazy part about this story that was given is that Mr. Durham just got released from prison. He just got released from prison. That's why you see what he has on. He got released, which he had done 10 years in prison. Somebody said, well, why? Why did he do 10 years in prison? Because 15 years ago, Mr. Durham got into a road rage accident with Mr. Gibbs. Getting out of his car, Mr. Durham got out of his car 15 years ago. And he punched Mr. Gibbs, who was an older guy and a cancer patient. And Mr. Gibbs fell out, hit his head on the cement and died. With that being said, most of us would say, well, Mr. Dorm, that's what came around, because you did what you did. That's saying what goes around, comes around. And nowadays people use this thing called karma. But from the scripture, we know it as you reap what you sow. So look at the consequence. What took place long before. And now, he never thought, possibly, that this would come around to him in the same manner. What he did was wrong, punching Mr. Gibbs. And what Mr. Padgett did to Mr. Durham was wrong as well. But the thing is this, you would have thought that Mr. Durham would have learned a lesson after he did what he did. You would have thought to himself or to yourself, man, you know, when you get out, you're going to stop having these road rages. You're going to stop with some of these things that you're doing. 
You would have possibly maybe heard him and said, you know what? I'm not going to do that no more. But because he did not learn, because he did not understand, that there's a consequence to everything you do, every choice that you made. He made a choice and he spent years in prison. And after that, he made a choice to have another road rage where he gets out the car and feel like he's going to go off again. But the person that he met on this day met him with something else. And so this definition of consequences, a result or an effect of an action or a decision or a choice that you make. And as we said, if you look at the Bible, there are consequences to choices that we all make. Even in the scripture, the Bible lets us know from the beginning, Adam and Eve, they made a choice. But now look at the consequence we're facing today by them making that choice. Sarah and Abraham made a choice to instead of waiting on God and waiting for the promised seed, which was Isaac, they made a choice to go ahead and override and say, well, let's have a baby like this. Now, look at what we're dealing with in the Middle East. Look at what we're dealing with. David made a choice. When David made that choice, by going to sleep with Bathsheba. He made a choice. What happened with the consequence of making that choice? That baby that they had died. That was a consequence. And then later in the house of David, we see uh, a family that has this function where we have Amnon and Tamar and Absalom. Well, we understand there was a, a rape that took place in David's house. And then there was murder that took place in David's house. All because of the consequence or the choice that David made. There's consequences to everything we do. So today, we make a lot of choices. These are some of the choices. You can make a choice regarding your school. I'm not going to Glade Central this year. I'm going to be going over to Pahokee. I'm not going over there. I'm going to Glade today. I'm actually going to be doing this. I'm not going to Palm Beach or State Palm Beach College over here. I'm actually going to another college. You can make a choice to what school or decision you're going to go. You can make a choice to what job. You can make a choice whether I'm going to work for this one or I'm going to quit because I'm going over here. I'm going to actually work this job. They offer me these amount of hours. They're going to pay me this amount of money. I'm actually going to do this. Well, I know I'm making a choice. I know this is going to keep me out of church, but I'm making a choice. I'm making a choice. This is my decision. I'm making a choice about my relationship. I'm going to marry this one, not that one. I'm going to get involved with this one and not this one. I'm going to make friends with this one, but not them. I like the way they do, but this is a choice that everybody makes. You can make a choice. You can make a choice where you want to live. I'm not listening to Bell Blaze. Why? Because of the crime way. I don't live in Bell Blaze. Why? Because ain't no jobs here. I'm not living in Cluiston or the Glean area. I'm not living over in Pahokee. Why? Because I don't like people over there. I got into arguments over there and people be hating over there. So I'm going to go ahead and move back into Bell Blaze. You can make a choice. You can make a choice or a decision whether you want to obey or disobey. My children make choices all the time when I tell them to do something, then they can make a choice whether they're going to follow daddy or not. They can make a choice whether they're going to listen to what I tell them to do. But, people of God, you can make a choice, but you cannot choose the consequence. So when God gives us the ability as free agents to make a choice, that's fine. Go ahead. Rock on. You can make any choice that you want to make. But the thing is, you don't have the choice to choose the consequence. So you can choose to live for God or not. You can choose to obey God's word or not. But you cannot choose the consequence for not obeying what he says to do. And we don't like that. We don't like it. I like the ability to be able to choose. What I want to do. That's why we got this thing, freedom of speech. I like the ability to be able to choose 
what I want to do. That's why we get attitudes with people. How you gonna tell me what I can do? Matter of fact, this is my life. And you can't tell me how to live. I can do what I want to do. You know how we do that to our parents when we get older. Mama, this is my life and I, I can do what I want to do. And how you gonna tell me? You lived your life, let me live my life. Do everybody know about what I'm saying? How you gonna try to tell me? Do what you want to do. I'm gonna do what I want to do. This is how we say, you do you, I'm gonna do me. You go ahead and rock on what you do, I'm gonna do what I want to do. You can live how you want to live. You can say what you want to say. You got freedom of speech. You can go where you want to go. You can live how you want to live. You can be who you want to be and where you want to be. But I'm telling you, at the end of the day, there's a consequence to every choice that you and I make. Whether it be good or bad. That's why the Bible tells us. Notice the scripture says in Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 7, make it simple, look at what it says, sir. That's what it says, it says, be not deceived. God is not mocked for what whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also what? Reap. So whatever you put out, believe me what I tell you, it's coming back. Whatever seed that you plant, you plant in this seed, I promise you it's coming back. Whatever seed, you got a seed of bitterness, I promise you, bitterness is coming back. You got a seed of hate that you just planted, I promise you, hate is coming back. If you planted a seed of discord, I promise you, discord is coming your way eventually. If you planted a seed of disobedience, I promise you, that disobedience is coming back unto you. So whatever you plant, if you tear up a marriage, if you come and wreck shop of a marriage, and you plant a seed of adultery, I promise you, it's coming back upon you. I promise you, if you got a seed of anger, I promise you, like Durham said, like Brother Mr. Durham, that anger is coming you. So whatever seed you plant, I promise you, you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap what you sow. If I'm a smoky or smoker and I like to drink, and at the end of it, guess what I'm possibly going to have? Lung cancer or kidney issues. If I teach my kids that being in the house of God and or not being in the house of God or not being saved or not obeying God, that's not important. You know, the consequence of that is that they'll never reverence and fear God. If I teach my children, it's okay to have different women or men coming in and out of their bedroom. Then. They too may go down that same road and that is the consequence because this is what I planted in their lives. This is what I told them. So I can never go back and say, hey son, don't be doing that, man. You got to get married. Hey, hey daughter, don't do that. You got to get married and you, you got to do this. They can always say to me, you didn't do it. So why are you telling me to do something? Even as a preacher or as a pastor, I got to watch what I do. And how I live. Because if I do these things that God says not to do, especially as a preacher or as a pastor, I promise you every preacher and every apostle, every prophet, every church that has not established truth, that has not preached the truth, I promise you, you're reaping what you sow and it's coming back upon you. God is going to get you. You know how mama used to say, he's going to wear you out. He's going to get you for old and new. Every soul that you allow to follow you and you were not preaching truth, I promise you. God don't get you for that preacher. God just don't get you for that. For old and for new. For every soul that followed you. That you were not telling them what they needed to do to be saved. So there's a consequence to everything that we do. If I teach my sons, it's okay. It's alright. You can hit women. Why? Because I hit their mother. And there's a consequence. That they will possibly be a womanizer. What am I doing? I'm reaping. What I've sown. I'm reaping what I've sown. Which is why you have to love God and love His Word that warns us. I love God's Word when it warns me. Most people would possibly get upset when they hear the Word of God. Truth is what I'm saying, people of God. Most people will walk away and get upset. Because you told them the truth. Because you showed it in the scripture. That's why we're scripture. We show scripture. I'm not just preaching with the music. But I want to show you from the word of God. 
most people get upset because when you show them truth or you tell them what they don't want to hear or when they want to hear it, they'll get upset with you. They'll get mad. But you got to love God. You got to love the true word of God because it warns us when we're stepping into fire. It warned me when I'm doing something wrong. But don't get mad when it comes to you to tell you that is his mercy that is being restored to you. That is his grace and his mercy that is reaching you saying, wait, stop doing what you're doing or you're going to face my judgment. I don't want to judge you, but I'm trying to tell you, you're about to suffer some consequences that you are not going to be able to handle. So I'm trying to tell you, stop, stop, pop, pop, pop. Don't go no further. Stop doing what you're doing. Don't do that no more. Because there's a consequence coming. So tell your neighbor real quick, we got to love you. I got to receive truth. Tell them. And I can't get mad at truth. This is why the scripture says, people of God, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, look at the Bible to read it. So you won't think that I'm making this up. And with all deceivableness and of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they what? They receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And many Preachers is what it's talking about. That are giving their own information, but they don't have truth. And many people are going to be deceived. They're going to be deceived and perish because they do not have a love for the truth that they might be saved. That's why I thank God for a preacher and a pastor that was in my life. I got a pastor. I got a bishop. I got somebody over him. And over that organization is God. So I'm not walking around like I'm bigger this and I'm bigger than that. And I can do this. I feel like preaching. I'm not walking around saying this and saying this, but what am I saying? That everything we do, me as a preacher, I got to face whatever God says. There's a consequence of this, and you better get it right, or you're going to die and perish. And with us as preachers, we're going to get judged more strict than everybody else. So I'm telling you, people of God, let's get right, let's love truth, and let's give God glory for His mercy. I heard a preacher say, we love messages on God's forgiveness. Everybody likes to hear about God's forgiveness. We wave our hands and, Mother, we say thank you, Lord. And we thank God for the cross and, and the blood and he, how he forgives us. And we, we, we quote, you know, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, oh God, that he gave his only begotten son. We quote all of these things about God's forgiveness. We talk about these forgiveness things. God is a forgiving God. God is a merciful God. Oh, God is so gracious. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We do all of these things. We talk about all of these things. We love the blessings. I don't know when you hear those blessings messages about you about to get some money and all this other stuff. The devil is alive. I don't preach that like that. No way. I say that you will be blessed and it ain't got to be money all the time, people of God. God bless you this morning to wake up this morning. So give God glory just for that. God bless you to be able to provide for you. Give God glory for that. That one of your kids ain't dead. That your children are not in the grave. I know you're about to say that happened to them, but your kids are still here. So give God glory for that. That's the blessing that I'm talking about. The blessings, people of God. But it ain't always about the money. We like to look nice, yes. We like to drive nice things, okay. You want to live in a nice house? That's fine. That's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I tell you, you like to shop. Ladies like to shop. Brothers like to shop. That's cool. But you know me. Y'all know where I get my stuff from. From the goodwill. Amen to that. I pick it up. $4, $5. Boom. Got something. And I rock it. You see what I'm saying, sis? I rock this shirt. I got it. Got it from the Salvation Army. You hear what I'm saying? Amen, sir. I ain't got time to spend money on this and that. I got to do the work of the Lord. And there's other things that need to happen in the house of the Lord. They're trying to walk around like I'm so Fire this and that. The devil is alive. Ain't nobody looking at you. Ain't nobody caring about you. Ain't nobody wants you. Come on, people of God. Who do we want? We want Jesus. Thank you for that, but sir. But we love, we love, we love the blessings. We love those prosperity messages. 
All of this foolishness. Give me a $30,000 line. All of this crazy stuff. Sitting up at the poor pit talking about let's count. Uh, one, two, three. We need five more people to give $120. We need eight more people to do this and do that. The devil is alive. I'm not asking and begging. If you want to give, freely give. If you want to pay your tithe, pay your tithes. But if you don't pay your tithes, you're cursed with a curse. So all I'm going to do is preach it. Then you got to obey it. You got to do it. But I ain't trying to make no come up with God's money. This is God's church. This is God's church. God's kingdom. This ain't the oldest darkest ministry. This is God's church, people of God. So that's why I can't do everything in this church. I don't mix the world things with the church. I don't mix it. I don't, I don't allow these mixed things to be coming in the church. I, I don't allow these things to be happening in the church. I don't allow. I got to watch what certain things come in the church. I got to watch. I don't let your business get mixed up. I remember Bishop said one time, he brought it out over the pulpit, and I was telling the brother, I was cracking up at this. This was so funny to me because I was listening to Bishop because he saw one of the brothers kind of like passing out his cards around the church, trying to make it and do this and do this, trying to sell business and do this and do that. And Bishop got on the pulpit and said, brother, don't you sweep past another card. Don't you give another card to nobody in this church. Because they didn't come to church to be a part of your business. They came to church to see God. They came to church to hear the truth. They came to church to be saved. They came to church to get their life right. So you can do that out there. But up in here, this is God's place. In the name of Jesus, if you don't believe it, it's God's word anyway. It's God's word anyway. You can clap it. You ain't got to clap it. I'll clap it. Play some music for me, sir. Because it's truth anyway. I'm already preaching. So we don't like when it's told to us. We like all of those other types of type of messages. God is going to be, oh, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. We like it. But as soon as we say something like, okay, yeah, 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 you're doing that. But you got to stop because that's a sin. And then when preaching or message or scripture comes forth and somehow God is dealing with your situation and you hear it and you convict it, what it's saying to you, God is simply saying, hey, I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Uh, I, I, I can see all things that maybe the pastor people cannot see. I just want to let you know you got to stop that. That, that right there, you, you can't do. I, I'm, I'm going to judge that. So there's a consequence to that. And so I remember, I remember when, you know, I, I got old as a young man, I remember... When I was smelling myself, that's how my mother said, you know, when you get old, you know how you get a little chest on, a little hair on your chest, a little hair on your chin. As a young man, you, and you're walking around like, you know, you got it, Nadine, you got your little joints and your nice little shoes on and stuff, and it's white, and it's kind of brand new, and you, somebody, some little girl said, oh, he killed, he killed, oh, he killed, and you walk around like, yeah, you know what I'm saying, I said, how you doing, right, all of that foolishness, you hear what I'm saying, and so I was smelling myself is what I'm trying to tell you. I was smelling myself. And so mama said, okay, if you don't want to obey, then what you got to do is get up out of this house. And then you're going to live with your daddy because you know daddy had gone. We're going to live with your daddy. Go stay with your daddy then. So I thought it was cool. I was like, cool, I'm going to stay with my daddy because I know my dad. Cool, I'm cool. Hey, I'm cool with my dad. So I get in my dad's house and I get over there. And everything was cool. Daddy was taking me places. Daddy was doing this stuff with me. Daddy was doing all this stuff. And I liked the way daddy was talking. I liked the way he was putting out. I was like, cool. But then all of a sudden, school started up because we were out of summer. School started up and mother, all of a sudden, I came home with some bad grades. I came home with some bad grades. And so I know my dad told me, he said, hey son, do good at school. Don't read no bad grades. All right, dad. Because I still thought he was cool. That's what I'm saying, sister. Kim. I thought he was cool. Don't read no bad grades home, son. Because school has started up now because summer is over. I said, all right, dad, I'll talk to you later. I got my new stuff on. Cool. I'm about to kill him, boy. I'm about to kill him on the first day of school. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to kill him. I walk, you know how you walk, y'all know y'all kids do You don't want to be in the shoes So you kind of walk like this Because you don't want to be in the shoes Because they brand new, I know what you're talking about When I see that And so I go to school and all of a sudden I bring back grades home Then everything switched upon dad That was cool with me and talking to me That was taking me out and doing things But as soon as I brought the bad grades home Everything switched Everything changed He start getting on my case He start wearing me out he start pulling out belts. He start talking about this. He start doing this. He start punishing me. He start doing this. And then all of a sudden I say, I got to go back home with my mama. I don't like this stuff. 
right here. I don't like this right here. This is what I'm saying, people of God, that when you come to truth, your father will tell you, he'll be cool with you and give you some blessings. But when you do wrong, it's switching sides. Here is the judgment side. You better get right. Because there's a consequence that's going to beat you. Come on, people of God, if you hear and understand what I'm saying. So it ain't only just about blessings. You got to eat, eat the whole roll. So some days you might come to church and you be like, yeah, that's the one for the front on the first row. Get a pastor that's talking to put like that sister right there. But then you come to church one day and it's all about you. And you got your hands up talking about what I do. Why you got a beef against me? I ain't got no beef against you, but God does. And so God is trying to get you right. God is trying to let you know I'm reading your rights. You better get together and ask God for forgiveness. And don't just say, forgive me, Lord, or my back. You got to say, Lord, I'm sorry. And turn away from the sin. Ask me the sin. Don't do this. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't fornicate. Don't commit adultery. Every sin that is evil is before God's eyes. You got to turn away from it. Because it's a consequence to all of them. People may not understand. Is there a consequence if I don't go to church, sir? Yes, there is. It's a consequence. Is there a consequence because I really just don't believe all the scripture that you're given? Yes. There's a con you can choose not to believe any of it, but there's a consequence to that. If you say, well, I'm not used to this and I'm not used to that, that's fine, I understand. But there's a consequence to that. That's why ministers in the church used to tell us, and I tell my sons, just because you miss class or miss school, and you're not there to receive the assignment, or you're not there to do the homework, just because you missed, don't mean that you're not held accountable for what you missed. So if you don't come to the house of the Lord and you miss it, the message, or you miss the scriptures, or you miss the teaching. There is no story way being said that say, well, Lord, you know, you can't hold me accountable. Uh -uh. There's still a consequence for missing and not being in the house of the Lord. It's a consequence to it. So let's get an understanding from this message this morning. So watch what it says. Number one, God gives us free ability to choose. Notice our scripture text again. Make it simple. Look at what it says on the monitors. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. Look at what it says to 18. The Bible says, now, now listen. Look at what God said. Now listen. Today I'm giving you a choice. Between what? Life and death. It's a choice. So you can choose. You can be like, man, psst, I, I don't believe the Bible like that. That's fine. That's your choice. I just believe, you know, that, you know, somebody did this to it. They could have messed up it. And then what about the loss of the books and all of that? And what about the apocrypha and all this other stuff and everything? That's fine. You, you ain't got to believe none of this. It's a choice to you. God gave you a free agent to choose. You can choose. You don't have to. But it's a consequence to that. So now listen, today I'm giving you a choice between life and death. Between prosperity and disaster. Look at what the Bible says, verse 16. For I command you, notice what he says. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commandments. People don't like commandments. People don't like doctrine. They say, man, why are we doing all this doctrine? And why are you talking about all these commandments? And commandments make it seem like you're telling me I got to do it. That doctrine is saying you're trying to hold me to that doctrine. Like it's dogmatic. That's what it is. And it ain't going to change. Yes, people of God, the Bible talks about doctrine. That we ought to follow a certain doctrine. The only doctrine that the Bible gives is the apostles' doctrine. It don't say nothing about the Baptist doctrine or the Mormon or the Methodist doctrine. It doesn't say nothing about the cogent doctrine. It does not say anything about the Catholic doctrine. It says that they follow, continue steadfastly in the what? Apostles' doctrine. So you got to know what doctrine the apostles were preaching. Because they ain't coming up with something off the top of their head. They got it from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Bible says, for well, I come command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep what? His commandments, not mine, not yours, not theirs, and decrees and regulations by walking in what? His ways, not my ways, people of God. Don't be trying to say that preacher over there on MLK, they got a way that they do things. This ain't my way, this is God's way, people of God. If you do this, notice what he's talking to you. Look at the dialogue. You will live 
and multiply. Everybody loves that about living and multiplying. If you do this is what it said, people of God. So that means if you don't do it, don't try to look at this and say, I get to have that too. And I get to be able to have that. Oh, if you don't do this, you can't get it. But if you do this, you will live and multiply. And the Lord your God will what? Bless you. And the land that you're about to enter and occupy. So just by a show of hands, how many like blessings? Just by a show, how many like blessings? We all like blessings. And just until somebody commands us and say, to get the blessings, you can't do this. Then that's when we say, wait a minute. I, I don't think it should take all of that. Wait a minute. I want what you're going to give me. But I don't think it should take all of that. That's why we do. We do the back to school giveaway. And I love giving back to the community. I love giving up. But do you know that some people may say that when they come to church, they say, hey, what time y'all going to be giving out the back to school giveaways? And we tell them, come on in. I'll come when the church is over with. You see what I'm saying? They want the blessing, but they don't want what God tells them to do. They want the blessings, but I ain't coming to church. Just give me what I want, and I'm out. The devil is alive. It don't work like that, people of God. It don't work like that in the kingdom of God at all. That when God blesses you, when God gives something to you, there's a contract that you got to uphold. And you signed your name in blood when you went down in the name of Jesus. You signed your name in the blood when you were washed in the blood of the Lamb. You signed your name in blood when he filled you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. He put a ring on your hand and he said, now you belong to me. So there's a contract. Come on, people, we got to uphold the contract. But if your heart turns, notice what it says. But if your heart turns away and you refuse, not me, to listen. And if you were drawn away to serve and worship other gods, that other gods, little g, means anything that you put over God, whether it be a man, a woman, whether it be family, whether it be a job, whether it be money, whether it be your car, whether it be yourself, whether it be your time, whether it be your laziness, whether it be your mindset, whether it be what you think and what you learned over the years, whether it be your business, whether it be that or whether it be this, anything that you put over God and God's word, I'm telling you, it has now become an idol to you. Then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not a long good life in the land that are crossing the Jordan of Occupy to Occupy rather this is what God told to Israel and it is the same thing that's why somebody may say well that's the Old Testament but don't you understand the Old Testament is a shadow of what's to come the Old Testament teaches us the lessons of what we are not to do so when I see the Old Testament I say ooh Israel did that I bet not do that Israel did this to God I bet not do that but when you try to overlook what happened to Israel Said that we can get away with it too. Then God says you're gonna have you won't get in trouble too. Cause you acting like I was just playing around. You know how you your kids sometimes play with you and you tell your child, I ain't playing with you. I'ma knock you upside your head, you keep playing with me. This is how God lets us know. I ain't playing with y'all. I left that there for y'all to get to understand what how I am as a God. That if I told them they gon' get it, then I'm gonna get y'all. And so when people say, What about grace? What about grace? What about grace? What about grace? The Bible lets me know, yes, if there's grace. But understand, if you got grace, should we continue in sin? God forbid. So don't try to rely on God's grace, thinking that you can get away with stuff. Uh, and sooner or later, God gonna pull your card and say, take, take, now is your time. You got to answer to this. So let's run down the list. Then why did you do this? And why did you do that? And why did you do this? And why did you do that? And sometimes God gotta turn it over to the other side. Because you didn't done so much. And why did you do this? And why did you do this? I'm running out of paper. And why did you do this? And why did you do that? And why did you do this? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Did you hear what I said? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? And then nobody in this Bell Glade area is going to be able to say, I didn't know. Or I didn't have a church. I didn't know I could go there. I didn't know nobody invited me. The devil is a lie. God, give me the strength and the ability and the people that can help me touch everybody in this city. That no one will be without an excuse. That they will not be able to say, God, I did not know. So he let us know. And you said, man, it all started in the garden. And God placed man there and told them not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He just told them, he said, hey, listen, don't eat from this tree. That's mine. You've had everything else done. But you know how we are. Why? Why can't I? What's going to happen? What's going to happen if I, if I touch it? 
What's going to happen? See, my, my kids tried to do that to me one time. And I had to get with them. Because they kind of try you a little bit. You know how kids do you. What's going to happen if I do it? What, what you going to do? Daddy, you going to hurt me for real? And I said, go ahead and try it. Go ahead right there and try it. I'm going to show you something. And I promise you'll never do it again. You hear what I'm saying? And so this is what happened, people of God. God gave us a choice. And I said, well, why, why, man? If he know we're going to mess up, because God is interested in having a relationship with you and not making you a robot or making you a slave to the point I got to beat you to make you do it. God wants a relationship. Let's get a relationship. What's the relationship he wants you to have? I want you to obey me. If you love me, obey my commandments. All that I've done for you, all that I've made you, I've made you. You are actually are existing because I've made it happen like that. You have life because I've made that. You have life. You have life more abundantly because I allow that. You have the riches and the goods and the prosperity and the blessings because I allow that. So if all of these things that I've done, and on top of dying for your sins, and top of all these things that I went through that you were supposed to go through, that we were supposed to go through. God says, I just want you to obey me. You go with that? I'll give you everything else. You can have all my inheritance. Everything I own, you can own. Everything I have, you can have. As a matter of fact, I'll make a place that no man has ever seen. Eyes haven't seen, neither ears have heard. What I have prepared for you. I got a place called New Jerusalem. Ain't nobody ever seen this place. But you ain't never had a thought of what it's going to be like. You look at the rich people over in Palm Island. They look at their riches like, look at what I got. But I'm telling you, people, God, what God has prepared for us, ain't nobody ever seen it, ain't nobody ever witnessed it, so God says, I'm going to give you all of these things, but what's the, what's the catch, God, just obey my commandments, you good with that, just obey what I tell you to do, you good with that, and we all say yes, Lord, because we're thinking about the blessings, but as soon, as soon, as soon as something is put before you, that contract that you signed does what, well, you know what, he has all mercy, and he has grace, I can put that to the side, oh, grab it back, people of God, and hold that contract, I can say, ah, I made a contract with the Lord. And so for God I live, and for God I die. For God you save me, and I'm not giving up my Holy Ghost. God you kept me, and I'm not giving up truth. You ain't fine enough. You ain't got enough money enough. You ain't gonna have me if we go be doing this and doing this. I love my wife too much. I love God too much. It ain't a bigger house. It ain't enough cars. It ain't nothing in this world that can pull me from the love of God. You gotta get in your heart. Do you really love Jesus. Do you love him? Because this is the catch. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Watch what it says, people of God. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, so which means what was spoken to the angels. That what Lucifer did and all of those angels that fell with him. That word was spoken. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, every transgression and disobedience receives a just and recompense of reward. So no matter what you do, if you do something that transgresses the God's laws or disobedient, it's a reward coming for you. There's a reward coming for you. There's a reward that God says, hey, I got a reward. You know how people get the reward? The kids get a reward for they're doing something in school. I went to school and I did this and I'm the honor roll. I got this and stuff like that. I was in school. I had good, perfect attendance and I did this and that. And they hold up the certificate like, thank you so much and for all I did. And they hold the certificate. There's a reward. So when you disobey the word of God, God says there's a reward for that. I'm going to give you a reward for that. So the question is, how many rewards are you going to get? How many rewards? Rewards of your disobedience and your transgressions are you gonna get? There's some lickings that my dad used to say, I'm about to get you about 12 of them. You're about to get this and you're about to get that. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna pass out because I can't take that. So there's some transgressions and some things and some rewards that you're about to get. Then I'm telling you, people of God, the consequence you're not gonna be able to handle. The things you're not gonna be able to handle. That's why I say you be careful how you treat people. Because when it comes back on you, you can't handle it when it comes back on you. That's why we got to be careful how we treat one another. Because if I do that to you, I promise you something down the road is coming your way. Something down the road is about to come to you and meet you. So be careful how you treat one another. Be careful how you treat your brothers in the house of the Lord and your sisters. We got to love everybody. We got to do right by everybody. We can't trespass everybody. You got to love everybody and forgive everybody. If you won't forgive, then somebody clap your hands on that. 
So there's a reward. Which is why the Bible says, how, how shall we, us, how are we going to escape? How are we going to get out this dilemma? If we neglect so great salvation. So God says, I'm going to give you a way to get out of your dilemma of me judging you and me uh, causing these consequences to come your way. This wrath that's coming on this world. Don't neglect the salvation that I gave you. What salvation? Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or the removal or the cleansing or the washing away of your sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What Holy Spirit? His Holy Spirit. He's a God. The Bible says God is a spirit. What type of spirit? A Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit, he's going to give that to you. So that you can know how to follow his laws after that. His commandments. And then we are able to have an advocate with the Father. That means that if you fall along the way. Not something that's presumptuous sin. Not some presumptuous sin, meaning that if you were doing this and you're doing that, you're stealing, you're doing this, you're sexual immorality, you're doing this, and you know that what that is doing is wrong. That's presumptuous sin. That's sin that you plan, that you know that you're doing wrong, but you won't stop and you're still trying to apply to God's mercy and grace and God, I did it again. But God says, no, no, don't tell me you're sorry when you keep going back doing that same presumptuous sin. I'm telling you to get out away from that. Turn away from that. Don't live like that. So that presumptuous sin, no, no. But if you fall, by the wayside or you fall or you fall into some sin or you're lured into some type of sin that you don't see that's coming then God we have an advocate with the Father to be able to turn to him and say Lord forgive me for I have sinned I can confess my sins unto him and he's faithful enough to forgive me for what I've done but I'm not talking about presumptuous sin talking about God know my heart the devil is a lie stop saying that yes he knows your heart it is wicked desperately wicked so stop using that God knows my heart God knows that heart to be changed that's why the Bible says create me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit, because I got a wrong spirit in me now, and the Bible lets us know that God, every word out of my mouth, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, I want it to be acceptable in thy sight, so you got to save me, how? So don't neglect the great salvation, don't neglect this great salvation, which leads me to my second point, the greatest decision or choice that you and I can ever make is to what? That we make a decision where we're going to spend eternity, so I'm asking you, make a choice today. Where are you going to spend eternity? Make a choice. And every day that God wakes you up, there is another choice or new choice that you got to make. What am I saying? This business once saved, always saved, the devil is a liar. Because if that be the case, God will never tell us to repent. Repent, repent means to turn back. Repent means to turn away, to come back to God. So if you live a bad life, or if you live a life, and all of a sudden you're doing good, but you fall into some sin that God says, that's wrong, don't do that. And you fall into that sin and stay in that, then God says, okay, go ahead, rock home with your bad self. Because I got a judgment or a consequence that's coming for that. And when he comes in, I promise you, you won't be able to stand. That's why the scripture says, who can stand before an angry God? Nobody can stand when God starts to do that. That's why the scripture in Revelation says that the mountains are running around here. Hey, follow us. Oh, we're trying to get away from the face of the one that created all of this. We scared too. So I'm telling you, people of God, you don't want to face the wrath of God because you ain't never seen it. All you ever really seen was the mercy of God. But introducing to you today, if you've never heard it, there's a wrath that's coming. There's a judgment that's coming. There's consequences that's coming to every choice that you choose. Come on, people of God, lift up your hands and say, Lord, save me. So I'm going to give you understanding. We're getting ready to get out. We know the scripture says in John 10 and 10, that Eve cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I come that they might have life. Notice what Jesus says. I'm telling you about what the devil is doing, the enemy. But he says, I'm coming that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. More abundantly. You thinking that you live it now. He said, but let me give you life. I promise you it will be more abundant. And so I'm trying to make a sense of this. And I was talking to ministers in training, uh, to the leadership class, rather, about I've been doing some reading about the prodigal son. Some more reading. I know you've probably read it before. In Luke 15, verse 12. And if you look at the word of God, I begin, God is showing us in this parable how he deals 
with us. God shows us in this parable of the prodigal son of how he deals with us. The son to the saints, I'm talking to you saints. The son was in the house. The son was in the house and everything that daddy had, he yeah. had. But the son made a decision on leaving the house. What you bless me with, God, that job, this, that money, and this and that, that, I, that you bless me with, I'm leaving. I'm out. God. Notice, people of God, this is what God is trying to show us. Do you ever read where the daddy said, no son, don't go. You don't read that. You never read where the daddy is pulling on the son or trying to reason with the son and say, wait, 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 wait. Come on, man, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. It's not a good idea to do. Don't do this. The daddy gave it to me. And let him go. That's how God deals with us. So we have this perception about the mercies of God and all of these things. But God is not holding anybody hostage. And if you don't want truth, because he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He is the truth. If you don't want his word, if you don't want him, he is not going to hold you hostage. You can leave. Somebody say, Pastor, you put people out of church. I am not saying that, people of God. Don't mix what I'm saying to say that's what I said. I didn't say that. I'm saying this is how God deals with us. That if you don't want to stay, God is not going to hold you hostage. Hold you. He's not going to try to reason with you. Now, I know I do that as a pastor. As a shepherd, I'm talking. As a shepherd, I got my, I got the staff saying, hey, call this person and call them and, and, and see if they'll come back. And I, I'll try to text you and I'll try to call you. I'll try to knock on your door. I'll come out and visit. I'll give a gift. Some other people know that I did that. I walk by your house and give you a gift. Say, hey, sis, hey, my brother, I ain't seen you. Everything okay. I just want to bring you a gift. Will you come on back? This is what I do as a shepherd. This is what I do as a pastor. Why? It's not that I want you to come to my church. Hey, I, you need to be at my church. You need to come to my church. This ain't my church, people of God. I don't own this stuff. I don't own you. You're not my saints. You're you're not, you're not my sheep. You belong to God. So as a pastor, yes, I'm calling you. Yes, we're testing you. Yes, we're trying to reach you. Yes, we're trying to get you to message. Yes, we're trying to get a hold of you to come back. Yes, elder, we where they at? Hey, minister, where they at? Hey, brother, where they at? You seen them? I ain't seen them yet, sisters. Do you know where they at? Can you talk to them? Tell them we want them to come back. Can you call them? Hey, I see them. They oh, Hey, go and get them before they leave the house. Before they leave the church, I want to talk to them real quick. This is what I do. But God don't do that, people of God. So sometimes we can step over God to do more than what God is doing. Because I'm trying to get people in the church. I'm just trying to keep you safe. But God is like, listen, the Father is saying, if they want to go, let them go. If they don't want to stay, then they don't have to stay. I ain't holding nobody hostage. I ain't making nobody love me that don't want to love me. So if you want to get mad at this brother or this sister, and it ain't me, I didn't do that to you. So why are you leaving? And why are you doing this? And why are you doing that? So God says, if you want to go, then go. But I'm not coming after you. So you got to make up your mind. Is this a good idea? Should I make this choice? Should I do this? Because there's a consequence. If you leave The Bible says that the son in verse 17, daddy never went out to look for him. He just had to come to his own senses. Saints of God, for those who were raised in the church, as we say, and you've been living the life and doing your thing, you got to come to your own senses. And God will be here as the Father was with open arms to receive you back. But you got to come to your senses. And this is the problem. Not everybody makes it back. That's the consequence. Not everybody makes it back. Man. So when you leave, the consequence could be you don't make it back. And some may say, you're trying to say that God will keep, uh-uh. What I'm saying is this. This is the worst part. That you can still be on the earth. And 
and never be affected by God's word again. You can come to church and the word don't do nothing for you. It don't touch you. It don't move you. It don't do nothing for you. That's when it is said, Ichabod, for the Lord has departed. That means God ain't dealing with you no more. Your heart won't be touched. No repentance, no more nothing, and nothing happening. God says, I dealt with this person. You might say, God, that's not fair because you gave Craig Canel, you gave little Joe. He had, look how long you've been dealing with him. God says, I give a measure of mercy to whoever and how much I want to give it. I just don't know how much he's giving you. You don't know how much he's giving you. So you take advantage of the mercy and the grace that he's giving you right now. Does that make sense before God? I know this ain't Monday night Bible study, but I'm trying to teach you to show you something. If that makes sense, people of God. And so God is also showing us. You have a choice to leave the house or leave truth or stay in sin. But there's a consequence to it. And you cannot say the father is wrong or he didn't have passion to try to keep the son from leaving. Because many people that leave or don't repent they claim that they're saved. Matthew 7 and verse 23. God is going to say this to you. I never knew you. Get away from me. Or depart from me. You worker of iniquity. Or the one that broke my laws. This is that. Don't turn your nose up at this people of God. Don't be upset with this. We're reading it together. So why are you mad when it comes to you, when truth hits you, or when truth talks to you? He said you can't stay in the sin that you're in. All sin is going to be judged. All sin. All sin is going to be judged. We're going to go home with this. Look at Romans chapter 2 verse 2. Look at what the Bible says. When the Gentiles sin, they will be destroyed. We're Gentiles. Don't let nobody tell you you're, you're a Jew or you're a Hebrew Israelite because you was on the ship in Deuteronomy. But we are all Gentiles. We're saved by grace. And following God's plan of salvation. When the Gentiles sin, they will, not maybe, they, 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 they're going to be true. Even though they never had God's written law. So even though we're not the Jews, and the Jews is the one that got it, we still will be destroyed, even though we never got it. And the Jews who do have God's law, will be judged by that law when they fail to obey it. Notice the next verse. For merely listening to the law doesn't make us right with God. So you coming to church, don't make you right. You hearing the word of God, you said I was a pew baby, I'm a preacher's kid, I'm a PK, don't do nothing for you. This is not about you just hearing it. But you got to obey it, apply it, and live it. It is obeying the law that makes it right in his eyes. Look at what it says. Verse 14 says, Then even Gentiles who do not have God's written law, notice what it says, show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without having heard it. That should tell us something right there. That there's many people that follow God's law that never heard it. But they follow it. Ain't that crazy? Let me sum it up for you. There's people that live like the world out there. That know certain things is wrong. And they ain't never been to church. But we that come to church on Sundays. How are we living the way that we live? And the heathen is sitting there saying. I thought y'all were saved. He got a baby in the church. Really? 
the heathen even knows. That's wrong. They demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts for their own conscience and thoughts either accuse them or tell them they're doing right. And this is the message I proclaim that the day is coming when God through Christ Jesus will judge everyone's secret life. Your secret life. I don't know what you did. I'm not looking into what you did. But God knows exactly what you're doing in secret. Pillow talk. Late at night. Out on the strip. In the club. Not life. And God sees me. It's dark. I'm in my car. Tinted windows. I'm gone. Nobody called me. He's judging every secret sin that you have done. So there's a consequence, people of God. That's all I'm saying. What would be the consequence to you? What would be the end? Well, this is what we're doing. My third point was my choice is that I will obey God. That I will receive the blessings instead of the curses. Blessings, God's favor and protection from his wrath and judgment. Curses to inflict harm or punishment or misery. But as he said to us in the scripture text, I call heaven in Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. People of God, this day is recorded in God's book. He knows everybody that was here this morning. And he has already checked your name off. Just like we do Bible study on Mondays. I see that one there. That brother came. That sister's back in the house of the Lord. That young man, he's listening. That mother over there, she read the scriptures. She got it. It's recorded. So nobody in here would be able to have an excuse. This was recorded to us today. Let us all stand. Even those that watch it, even on Facebook Live, that we never ever will see that they watched it. It is recorded against them. So the Lord says to us in Revelation 3 and 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman, ask your name, hear my voice. Open the door. I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear the Spirit say unto the churches. People of God, I hope that you hear me. Facebook Live, I hope that you're here. There's a consequence to every choice that we make. I pray that you will make better choices. I pray that you will choose you this day who you will serve. Whether the gods that your fathers or family or those who back in the day served, or whether the true and the living God, hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. He says, I've given him a name above every name, and in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that which is in heaven, on earth, and under me. The Bible says in Acts 14, verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given among men, whereby we must be saved. You cannot use no other name, no other titles. The only name that you can use is the name of the Lord Jesus. If you want your sins to be washed away, you've heard it. I ask you today, what consequence do you want to face later? Somebody say, well, what about Matthew 28 verse 19? No problem. 
Bible says in Matthew 28, verse 19, if you have a question about it, you can come and talk to me. The Bible says, notice what the commandment that he gave unto the people of God, to his disciples. Pull it up for me, says Matthew. Notice says, it says, go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. It never says do it in the names. Boom. But do it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Which is why you have to ask the apostles. Why did y'all all do it in the name of the Lord Jesus and nobody did it in scripture in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Because they understood we got to do it in the name. So if I write you a check today, people of God, and I put on their father, you can't go and cash that. They're going to ask you, what's the name? If I write you a check and I put on their son, we see that. But what is the man's name? The only way that you're going to be able to cash it, you have to have the name written. Put your father's name on you. We pray in the name. We heal in the name. We testify in the name. We shout in the name. We sing in the name. Why don't you go down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? So we here today. Let's lift up our hands. I pray that you hear and not walk out after hearing the word of God said unto you. Because there is a consequence to everything. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the baptism and giving me an opportunity to repent. Father, right now, forgive us for all the things that we've done. I pray that every soul in this place, God, will cry out, Lord God, and will ask you for forgiveness for the things that they've done. Blot out our transgressions and hide our iniquities. Forgive us for what we have done, what we have said, how we have lived. Every secret thing, God, that is in our life that we have not, Lord God. We've been loyal to other preachers and, and loyal to churches and different positions. But God, let me be loyal to you and your word. Father, it may hurt because it's truth. But God, I want to be saved. I don't want to face judgment. I don't want to face the consequences. So I pray. Father, if you are real, I know you are. Will you convict and prick the heart to come and be baptized in the name of Jesus, your name? You said, God, if they be ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of them. So, God, I pray that no one in here is ashamed of you. That they will obey what you told your disciples to teach and to baptize them in your name. I give you the glory, honor, and the praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus, trouble the waters of baptism. Fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. Give somebody a change of mind and a heart. Father, bring my sister back to the house of the Lord. Bring my brother that they will repent and come back to the house of the Lord. Every prodigal son and prodigal daughter, every Lord sinner, I pray that they will come to themselves to be able to see themselves the way that you see them. Every mother that has a son and every brother that has a brother or a sister or a family member that is not saved. Father, bring them into truth. All you want to do is save us. All you want to do is save us. God, save us. Save us in the city. Save Bill Lee. Save the sins. Forever we'll remember what you've done. And we'll always give you glory on our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we all sing. Amen. Amen. Let's give God glory in this place this morning. If you're here today, come on. The water is ready. We're here ready to pray for you. Come to the altar if you need to come. But we love you. We thank God for you. We give God the glory on you. But don't just hear the word and let it go on one ear. But for those that are here at this altar, we're going to pray for you. We give God glory and honor for you. Come on and get baptized in Jesus' name. God bless you. We know that God loves you. We know that God loves you. So come on and just surrender unto God. Everything and every secret sin in the name of Jesus. I'll be here waiting if you want to be baptized. I'll be here waiting if you want to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But God bless you. Tell your brother and sister you're glad to see them. Give them a hug if you haven't seen them in a long time. In the name of Jesus, my brother, come on and get baptized. Come on and get prayed for.
for it as God to 